I'm a French nerd, and I have two passions in life, so I hope I can communicate this. I am passionate about the brain, and I'm passionate about marketing. So the subject that I'd like to talk to you about today is neural marketing. I became a neural marketer 12 years ago, and in neural marketing, you have neuro, which means the brain, and marketing as in, I'm going to try to sell you something that maybe you don't even need. <laughs> so I believe it's important for you so that you can protect yourself against people that are trying to sell you something you don't really need. But as you'll see, there is an application to this, which if each and every one of us really understood our reptilian nature, I'm going to talk about the reptilian brain, if each and every one of us could understand our reptilian nature, we could change the world. So what's the definition of neural marketing? Neural marketing is the science of human decision, and it's about using neural metrics, biometrics, and psychometrics to understand our behavior. <laughs> All right, don't worry, you will be able to understand the rest of my talk, because I'm going to make this very clear that it's all about understanding our brains and understanding that maybe there is something that looks like a buy button inside the brain. Now, mar neural marketing started because marketing does not work. Why? Well, here is what we do in traditional marketing. In traditional marketing, we take our consumers, we take our customers, and we ask them, what do you want? And based on the responses, we're going to build a product, we're going to build a strategy to sell that product, right? But do you know what is the fundamental problem with this approach? Guess what? Guess what? They don't know what they want. So it does not work, right? So instead, in neural marketing, what we're going to do is this. We're going to ask them, what do you want? But we're not going to trust their answers because we know they don't know. <laughs> instead, we're going to look at various physiological changes that happen in our body when we ask them this. So there are various techniques that are being used. One of them is called facial coding. We're going to measure the emotion that is being uh, displayed on our face by the 60 muscles that control our faces. We're going to be using eye tracking to figure out exactly where they are looking at in an image. We are using voice analysis whereby we're not going to pay attention to the words they say, but we're going to be paying attention to their tone of voice. Then we're going to be using the old lie detector. It's called the skin conductant test, where we measure the heart rate, the blood pressure, and how electricity flows between fingers. Then we can also use an EEG or electroencephalogram to measure the small currents on top of our skulls. And then another technique is called the MRI, whereby we measure the amount of oxygen that is being consumed by the brain in various regions of the brain. So that's what people do in neural marketing. Now, I happen to be an expert in applied neural marketing. So what do we do in applied neural marketing? We look at how neuroscientists tell us about how certain stimulus provide a certain response. And can you guess what response we are trying to get from consumers? Yes, we want them to say yes or buy, right? So today is the first day where I address consumers because normally companies hire me to be on the other side of the fence. So I'm going to reveal to you their secrets. That good enough? <laughs> All right, so let me give you an executive summary of what we know about the brain. But what we know about the brain is that you don't have a single self. You have three selves. First, you have your neocortex or your new brain, and that's the rational self. Now, if I take my model here, this is the neocortex. It's the outside, the wrinkly, pinky part of the brain. But then deeper inside, you have another self, which is your emotional self which tends to be located here in what's called the middle brain. But deep down, further below in the brain is your reptilian brain, and that's your instinctual self. And here is what neuroscientists have discovered over the years, is that our instinctual self has a greater impact on our final decision than the rational us or even the emotional us. So what should we do with this? Well, we should listen to those people that are the experts, right? So here is what one of them say. His name is uh, Dr. Rapai, he's a neuroanthropologist, and he says, the reptilian always win. Wow. And then this guy who teaches neuroscience at uh, NYU says, the amygdala, which is part of the reptilian brain, has more influence on the cortex than the cortex has on the amygdala. And then this guy who won the 2002 Economy Nobel Prize said, although System 2, which is the neocortex, believes itself to be where the action is, the automatic System 1, the reptilian brain, is the hero of the book. 
most people's choices correspond to the predilection of system one. So what I'm here to tell you is that we are reptiles. <laughs> Not that we didn't know it since, you know, Darwin, we've learned about this, but people use this against us to sell us stuff we don't need. So let's look at the difference between your new brain and your reptilian brain. So these are some of the characteristics of your new brain. Let's contrast this with what happens in your reptilian brain. First of all, your reptilian brain is very old. It's 500 million years old, as opposed to only three to four for the neocortex. The reptilian brain is very fast, but it's very limited, because uh, I didn't want to use another S word. It's kind of stupid, right? Uh, your reptilian brain does not have any notion of past or future. It only lives in the present. It's a brain that's always on, so that if there is a bear that enters the caves, you can wake up. It's a brain that is effortless. You don't have to think about it when you ride your bicycle. You know, you keep your balance. It's a brain that is unconscious. You don't have to think about it. Your reptilian brain controls your digestion, your blood pressure, your heart rhythm, etc. And then finally, it's a brain that is completely uncontrollable. So I want to show you now a couple of uh, images or ideas or exercises, and you will see that you will use one different brain to process this. So if I show you this, <laughs> this is an exercise for your reptilian brain. Instantly, without any efforts, you kind of create meaning out of this image. Now, how about this one? Try it, guys. All right. That takes efforts, that takes your, your rational brain, and it takes time to process that question. Now, I want to show you that I can create conflicts in your brain now by showing you images which are uh, illusions. So you may have seen that one last year, right? But is this a spiral or are these circles? So everything in your brain right now is telling you this is a spiral. Yes? Yes. Well, guess what? These are circles. Right? These are perfect circles, yet everything in your brain, your reptilian brain, tells you these are spirals. Let me show you another one here. Which one of those two squares between A and B is darker? What? Come on. Anybody sees that B is darker than A? No? Anybody thinks that A is the same color as B? Well... The answer is A and B are exactly the same color. Yet everything in your brain is telling you that A is darker than B. So it's very easy to fool your reptilian brains around. So I'm going to do a little exercise here. I'm going to ask you to read out the letters. No, actually, not the letters. The colors in the words that are coming up. And we're going to do this as a group exercise. So I want everybody to focus. So I'm going to use the pointer. And we all read at the same time the color of the words, not the letters, okay? Here we go. So everybody. Red, white, green, blue, black, green, red, brown, white, blue. Okay, you're doing 100%. You're doing very good, guys. I'm going to make it a little bit more complicated now. We're going to keep the same exercise. I want you to read out the color of the words. Ready? Here we go. Okay, you're not doing so good on that one, I want to tell you. I thought I was going to meet a lot of smart people in band. Obviously, there are exceptions. Anyway, I was able to create conflict in your brain by showing two different things to your, you know, your neocortex is trying to do one thing, your reptilian brain is trying to do something else, and it creates conflict. So, then if the reptilian brain plays such an important role in what we decide, what stimulates the reptilian brain? Well, there are only six stimuli to the reptilian brain. So let's review them one by one. The reptilian brain is self-centered. It's all about me, me, me. How do advertisers use this against us? Well, guess what? Look at this advertising. What did they do? To get to your reptilian brain, they shot that picture from the viewpoint of the rider of that bicycle. So in essence, when you see this ad, it's you riding this bike. What else do they do? They use the word you when they communicate to you. So for example, obey your thirst. I want you. You got 30 minutes. Do you, Yahoo? And you just do it. All right. Second stimulus is contrast. Contrast as in before, after, warm, cold, night, day. 
So here is an ad which uses contrast to get to your reptilian brain. You see instantly, this is an ad for yogurt. You see the contrast between the kid's bone and the big elephant bone. And it's an ad which is selling you the idea of you know, using calcium so that you build strong bones. How about this one? I'm sure you've never seen that one before. <laughs> the guy without the hair and the guy with the hair. Do you know why these one work? Because they use contrast to get to your reptilian brain. The next stimulus is tangible. What that means is the reptilian brain barely understands words, so it has to have very tangible concepts to understand it. How do they use this? Reserved for drunk drivers. <laughs> See how they made it tangible? Right? How about this one? Mr. Clean. Get it? They made their value proposition tangible. The next stimulus is beginning and end. What that means is the reptilian brain is awake at the beginning of an interaction, at the end, and it forgets pretty much everything in between. In fact, here is what George Lucas said. The secret to a good movie is a hot opening, a hot close, and just don't crop in the middle. Because what happens in the middle is, doesn't quite matter. <laughs> then the next stimulus is visual. In fact, if I take my model of the brain here, you would see that the optic nerves plug directly into the reptilian brain, and the optic nerves happens to be 50 times faster than the 